Hey, and welcome to part three of Penguin Clothbound Classic Rebind Tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to be covering how to make your case and cover it in book cloth. Okay, we are going to be making the case now. So there's a couple different ways that you can do it. Um, you've probably seen people do it different ways online if you see other videos. The easiest way that you're going to be most successful the first time is to make sort of like one of these things. This is basically a foolproof measuring method so that you know that your case is going to fit perfectly around the book that you made. Because you make this thing, then you put your case, your text block in and then you measure all the way around. And so you already have an exact idea of how the book is gonna fit in here. So for first timers, I suggest using this method. And then once you get more comfortable, you can eliminate the process of gluing your spine and case board pieces to this piece of cardstock and just measure and glue directly to the book cloth. So we'll go through both methods. So first thing you need to do is measure your spine piece. And there's a couple different fields of thought of how wide your spine piece should be. Some people believe that it should be the width of just your text block itself, so it would just be that width. Some people believe that it should be the width of your text block plus your two cover boards. So then you would measure from there to there. I find that I personally like the width of the text block plus the measurement of just one of my boards for my spine piece width. However, you don't have to use a piece of the case board for your spine. You could also use a piece of cardstock. You could use a piece of thicker than um, printer paper, but thinner than cardstock. Just you could you could. But I find that I like the look of all of them. They don't use it for this, but I find that it's sometimes harder to get the design on when there isn't this hard piece underneath the book cloth, if that makes sense. So for books around the size that we're making, it's fine to use this as a backing. However, if you're going to be rebinding a really thick book, such as one of these into hardback, you're not gonna want to use a hard piece of this case board for the spine of these, just because it's gonna make it very awkward. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to use a piece of cardstock that replaces the piece of spine for the same width. Same with one of like a book such as this. So as you can see in a hardback book, they don't actually use case board for the middle of it. And there's more flexibility. Okay, anyways, moving on. Okay, so to make one of those predetermined cases, always put down parchment paper first so you don't get your board tacky. Get a piece of cardstock, remember the long grain. Get your spine piece, it's longer than it should be, but that's okay, because we're gonna trim it all later. Just do an outline of where this is, making sure everything's even. Take this away. Do a little bit of glue to glue it down. Flip it over, take your bone folder. Make hinges, to sort of go like this. Okay. So then you've done this part. Now we need to attach the case boards. So for that, you wanna measure seven to eight millimeters on either side of this. So this is where this is helpful. You can either use your little, your little guy that goes right to the edge, 
kind of like that's there. Measure. 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 Draw your line. And then glue, 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 glue. Or you can either make your own or on, a couple of you asked, on Etsy, these are called bookbinding tools. If you just search bookbinding tools and they're 3D printed little spacers that are already the exact width, like seven or eight millimeters. And so all you have to do is put that there, draw a line. Put that there. Draw a line and then just glue your baseboards, your case boards on. For this part, it's important to have your T-square because we'll, that's way too much glue. I'll put some over here. Make sure you have your, you just need a light, just enough to coat this. You don't really want glue on, extra glue on the sides of your board. So once we do that, we'll take this away. That's a fair piece I have. And I'll line, you line this up, line this up. that down so everything is square. Flip it over again. Watch out if there's glue. And watch out for getting glue on this and just smooth it out. Okay, so now you basically have your case, but it's not cut down to size. So then you take your text block text block in here, push it towards the end, and then you want three millimeters around the whole thing. So you take the ruler that goes with the measuring all the way to the end, and at the bottom you're going to measure until it's three millimeters. And then once it's three millimeters on the bottom, you're gonna hold it in place and then go around the rest and mark off three millimeters around that side and then flip it over and mark off three millimeters around the top and the fore edge. Okay, now that everything's marked, you're going to then cut off the excess. So you're going to do your lines. You might have to double check a few times to try and get everything even. Okay, top's done, we'll check that. Looks good, now we'll do the sides.
Okay, just checking all around. Everything looks good. However, you might have a little sort of funky cut where it's just, you know, looks like that. And so for that, you can just get a little sander and it's linked in my storefront. And you just sand it. I'm not gonna do it here because it makes a mess, I do it outside. But just, you can just sand down the edges so it's not like that. Okay, and then you are, if you're doing this, you're ready to glue the case on to the book cloth. Okay, so for cutting your book cloth, you, making sure that it's the right grain direction, obviously. Um, three feet, so, okay. so, I would say take your case or your case boards. Since this one is this way, I don't wanna put my case board onto this because it's gonna get it dusty. I would just measure how big it is, how long it is, and then go an extra 30 millimeters on each side, or conversely, an extra inch on each side, just to give yourself room to work with. So let's do it's like 10 and a half long. And this is where you want your rolling cutter because that makes life easier. So 10 and a half, Okay, now since you've already made your case, this white side is going to be what goes like that. So you want the full part of the spine that you can see looking up at you. So we have lots of room and I'm going to just trim this some more to begin with. Because in the end, you're gonna end up trimming your turn-ins, but you're, and, you're going to glue everything down and then you're going to go around and cut again so that everything is 15 to 20 millimeters around. Okay, so you're going to need your big wide rubber brush and bone folder for this part. So since you've already have this basically whoa, where you need it. And just draw an outline around the entire case. And start gluing it down. Some people start in the middle and they just glue down this and then work from either side out. I normally start on one side, just glue down this, flip it over, spread it out, and then work through the rest of the case. Conversely, if you were doing the method where you, none of these really, this is just an example, doing the method where you wouldn't have made this and you would have just measured your boards to side where they were the same width as your text block. And then just three millimeters on the top and the bottom over of each of these. You would also, you would also then, once you had all of those pieces, like your spine pieces isn't a spine piece, you would just put them down on your board using your T-square. You would just put them down on your board using your T-square and your spacer and just spacer, piece, and just draw. And you would just draw in the 
three rectangles and just glue those and flip this over and even everything out that way as well. And I think I can cut in an example of that. But that's how you would do it without making the case. Okay, so let's start going. And I glue a little bit into where the hinge is going to be. Rest of the glue. Okay, now the back's glued on, so you need to trim off all the sides. So you can either make your own space or just by cutting a spare piece of So this is a 20 millimeter one. I normally use 15, but I can't find it at the moment. And then another thing you can buy on Etsy are these corner trimmers because you need to trim all of the corners of your turn ends for when you're folding the book cloth over onto the case. So these come in a lot of the different packs and it just makes life easier because otherwise you have to, you know, sort of eyeball measure exactly how much you're going to cut off, which is like two millimeters or something. So this just, instead you just go all around doing that really fast. It just saves time. So definitely recommend getting one of these. Okay, now we're ready to glue down all the turn-ins. So I make sure that this is clean there's no glue anywhere. And I've just folded over the previous piece and I start at the top of it because you need a little glue. And so you're gonna glue the top and bottoms and fold those over first. So we're gonna glue here, then we're gonna glue here, and then we're gonna glue here, and then we're gonna glue here. So the first two sides, the top and the bottom, 
you really don't need that much glue, just enough to get it wet, not a ton, so it doesn't spray out over the edge. I'm still an over gluer, so sometimes it still happens. You just need a tiny bit of glue. And you'll need your bone folder as well. What I like to do is, since now the glue's gone off the page there, I pull it down a little bit and I fold like this just to make the initial crease. And I come back with my bone folder and I go like this and I just sort of glue it down. And if you haven't done too much glue, then no glue will pop out the sides. See, like a tiny bit of glue just popped out there, which means now my bone folder has glue on it there. So you need to be careful when you're smoothing down the rest of it that your bone folder doesn't get glue. So otherwise you'll have like glue splotches everywhere. Okay, that side's done. Flip it over and make sure you start to move down because there's glue there and there. So down with the initial crease make sure there's no glue on my bolden folder should have glued edges okay so now we're going to glue the top and the bottom, but then once we've glued the top, before we actually glue it, push it down, we need to poke in the corner. So you're going to take the tip of your bone folder, once you've glued it down, and take your bone folder, you're going to poke in the corner, poke in the corner, and then do the same thing as before. Oops, see, I'm use my phone folder so it's got a weird crease. There. And see then the edge is clean. That's what happens when you have too much glue. You have a little bit of glue poke out. Okay, and now that your case is actually done and you have nice square edges all around because you're going to see them. Do you see? That's the turn in. You can see it and it just it lines up. And normally you use 15. I have 20 because I, I have a 15 marker, but I can't find it right now. And then most important is now you need to press your case so it dries because otherwise it's going to curve up a little bit. So for this, I use my larger board, but even just putting the case down, parchment paper over it, and even some books for a couple hours will work. But you just want to press it dry. So I... Use these big boards. I get parchment paper covers.
Now your board's just pressing.